thank you very much for giving us time to talk on eCancer TV. You've just given a very high-level keynote lecture at ECHO. And you're, uh, you think you're a symbolic uh, basic scientist put in the program just to, uh, to make it look multidisciplinary, or do you think they really mean it, uh, these, uh, these clinicians? Well, I hope, I hope they mean it, because uh, I really think that we still have a lot of things to learn and that uh, were one of the reasons for the relatively high uh, percentage of failure of drugs entered in clinical trials is because we still don't have a full understanding of how oncogenic signals uh, work. Yeah. And the clinicians don't understand any of it? No, no, I don't. I think, <laughs> I think they understand and they look good clinicians understand, but they, it is not their responsibility to learn to discover this uh, basic biology. It is our responsibility. Now, what I think it is important is that we talk each other, especially with new drugs, where they find a result, an expected result, that needs new biology, and then they come back to us. We can solve that biology. We can solve that issue. Hopefully, this new data serve to make a better drug mm. that then eventually does better in the clinic. But I think what it is obvious to all of us, clinicians and non-clinicians, is that the current uh, rate of failure of drugs in, in the clinic is not acceptable. Absolutely not acceptable. And we seem to stand out amongst the other disciplines in terms of our failure rate. And we're spending loads of money in the interphase 3 trials and then being turned down. Do you think the, 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 the problem could be before the clinic in, in our models? Or? Absolutely. I'm, I'm convinced this is obviously not the only problem, but it's certainly a major problem. Yeah. The mouse models used today to approve drugs, the classical xenografts, where human tubers have been passed from mouse to mouse to, for generations, are giving us the wrong results. Mm -hmm. I'm really convinced of that. Um, I really think that if we were to use the new generation of mouse models that closely recapitulate human cancer, we will get much more predictive results and the failure rate, once the compound is in the clinic, will be lower. Obviously, it is more difficult, more time consuming to use these mouse models, but I think ulti ultimately uh, pharmaceutical companies will have to, uh, will have to use them. You run a spectacularly successful uh, institute in Madrid, the CNIO, and you've been investing into drug discovery and, and sort of thing. How have you set it up locally in Madrid? Well, I set it up locally because I am from Madrid and they made me an offer to set it up. But yes, my uh, one of the main focuses was to make sure that we establish um, a, a, a a good size uh, drug discovery program. I am convinced that academia can contribute to cancer research and, and fighting cancer, not only with knowledge, but also providing some drugs or at least drug candidates. And also another characteristic of the CNIO, we house one of the largest collections of genetically modified mouse strains. And that really serves as the basis of, um, I would say, more than 50% of the work currently done at the Institute. And I think that takes us a little bit closer to the real world of the, ca of the cancer patient. And you're also one of the first people to invest in epigenetic phenomena and, and research. Uh, and, and, and you see some potential targets coming out of that work uh, further well, down the line? Well, there are more than potential. There are already yeah. targets. Uh, there are already compounds in the clinic. Um, the issue with that is that obviously epigenetics are complex mm -hmm. and um, it's going to be um, uh, important to generate a variety of targets and see how far we can get through epigenetics. Because um, after all, epigenetics uh, control expression of a lot of tumor suppressors. Mm -hmm. And so the mutational spectrum of human cancer uh, in the DNA is totally incomplete. That is, that's only half of the question. The other half has to be epi is epigenetics. So we have to find out ways to control epigenetics using drugs. First stage DAC inhibitors uh -huh. are. Uh, are, are, are having a tough time well, in, the early, uh, in the early trials. Do you the, think we'll pick the wrong ones or we just need to be patient? 
I think we have to be patient. Again, um, this is a complex issue because you are hitting a target that then affects multiple targets. Mm -hmm. But the same way that the early kinase inhibitors, in fact, kinase inhibitors, uh, with the exception of Gleevec and, and subsequent inhibitors, they're not being, um, you know, they, they have limited success. So I think we just have to go step by step. And again, trying to test these drugs in, in, in models uh, that really recapitulate human cancer will save us a lot of time and a lot of effort in the clinic. Professor Barbasud, thank you very much indeed for coming along. I really My appreciate your time. It's My pleasure.